Hello, Anime Yan here, and today we're just doing a tutorial on how to get the Dead by Daylight uh, dev build, the 3.0 build, working and running on your computer. So, uh, Schmoll generously gave me permission uh, to make a tutorial for the tool he created, um, uh, the fix he created, so credits to Schmoll and Shinsley uh, for writing the tutorials. So, uh, first things first, I want to say that there is a link to the Discord uh, for Reknac, Reknac and Schmoll's Discord uh, in the description below. So, on this Discord you'll find the tutorials um, that Shinsley and Schmoll have written. And you can use those and just run with them. So, or you can just use this video as well. So, basically, um, what is the dev build? So, the, develop, the developer build was a build that was publicly leaked of uh, Dead by Daylight, and basically you can use it for artistic purposes, uh, and it allows for custom camera angles and cinematics. So Reknax videos, uh, if you look at those uh, for inspiration, you can see just the potential you can achieve with this tool. Okay, and you can also do some modding uh, in Dead by Daylight um, by replacing textures, models, and animations. And some of these tutorials are still to come from Shinsley and Schmoll, but um, you can replace textures just fine and uh, have them appear in the actual game, which is really cool. So, a few disclaimers before we start. First things first, um, this does not work with every computer. Uh, there are some instances it will not work, so you need to keep in mind that may occur with your computer and this may all just not work at all and there's not really a fix for it as far as we've found. Um, second of all, it does not work with uh, finding a match um, with the official up-to-date build so it doesn't work, you can't uh, find a match with other online players. So you can only use the kill your friends mode. It is multiplayer but only with your friends on Steam. And third of all, you need a lot of good friends who have bought Dead by Daylight if you want to film uh, active cinematics. That is, cinematics of characters moving and because you need someone moving them and you can't film and move at the same time, if you understand what I mean. Okay, so now, um, now we go on to the actual process of how to get it. Uh, a few prerequisites before we start. First of all, you need a Steam profile with Dead by Daylight uh, bought on the profile. Um, that's kind of the reason why you need good friends who have bought Dead by Daylight um, and are using the dev build. But anyway, so you need friends with uh, the dev build, otherwise you'll only be able to play um, by yourself and it won't be multiplayer. And if you want to make cinematics, you'll need a controller which can connect to your computer because it'll make your cinematics and your custom camera angles that much smoother. Okay, cool. Now let's get to the software really quick. Okay, so if you want to, the, the software that you need, first of all, you need to type into Google Fiddler. Okay, once you've typed that in, you want to click on the first link, download Fiddler Classic. Uh, and then you have to fill in some reasons, your email, country, and accept the Fiddler end user license agreement. Uh, then you need to click download for Windows. And then once you've done that, you need to install uh, the software onto your machine. Um, but I've already done that, so I won't do it again. The next software that you'll need to get this all working is Universal Unreal Engine 4 Unlocker. So just click on the first um, link, and then you'll just download it from here, this link right here. It'll, get, it'll send you to a mega link, and you can download and extract this file. So it'll give you a zip file, and you can download and extract that. Okay, so uh, the thing you need then is the dev build. So you need the actual dev build, and we have it right here. So if you look in the description of the video, there will be a Google Drive link that I have uploaded um, for the developer build here. And basically, once you get the file, you can click right-click Extract here. If you have um, WinRAR 
or you can uh, extract it even with the normal Windows uh, things. So you can just extract it and essentially uh, what you'll see is you'll see this folder structure here. You should see this folder structure here uh, with all these files. Okay, so from there, um, yeah, we're basically running. All we need to do is just some Fiddler configuration now. So we're just going to type in Fiddler into the uh, Windows search and then click on the first uh, app that appears. From there, we want to click on Tools, Options, and then click on the HTTPS tab. Now, these boxes need to be ticked. I will tick them again, uh, just so to clarify. So you need to tick the box, Capture HTTPS Connects, Decrypt HTTPS Traffic, and Ignore Server Certificates Errors. Errors. And then you need to click on, click on uh, Actions, Trust Root Certificate, Yes, Yes, and then yes, so you'll need administrative rights to say that. And just go OK, OK. So that's all done that way. Now you need to click on Rules, uh, Customize Rules. OK, so you'll open this window. And what we need to do is we need to replace everything in here with what is in the Paste Bin link. So the Paste Bin link, I'll put a Paste Bin link in the description of the video, um, but uh, it's also going to be, it's also in the Discord um, server. Uh, basically, you just need to use this one uh, and just go to the very bottom and press Control A to select everything and Control C to, uh, to copy everything. Now, next point, uh, you want to go back to that window. If you forgot, don't worry. So all you need to go is Rules, Customize Rules. And then press Control A to select everything and Control V to paste and delete everything and replace everything with a new one. You'll see this yellow line here. So this yellow line means that the document and configuration file is unsaved. So you want to press Control S to resave it, make sure everything's running fine. Okay, that's all good. Now, uh, what we want to do is we're actually already done. So now all you want to do is you want to uh, put Steam on and from here, your, your, uh, you should be fine uh, to get everything done. But anyway, I've got Dead by Daylight purchased on this account and I'm logged in and I've got Steam in the background and I've got Fiddler in the background. That's very important. You need both of them in the background. Okay, so next I will just uh, double click on this file called Dead by Daylight with basic commands dot bat. I will double click on it. And this is launching it with just some console commands. You can just type them in, in inside the game, but um, Schmoll has made this launcher just for your um, convenience. So these are basic commands that make uh, the screen, like make some of the debug messages not appear and it just makes it your life easier, I guess. Now we're just going to click into it just to log in and every, everything. And yeah, so if you can see this, um, you'll be fine. Uh, you should also be able to shift tab. Um, shift tab meaning uh, just to show that your uh, Steam overlay is working. If your Steam overlay is not working, uh, there is probably a problem with your process and just ask in the help channel of the Discord server and um, a lot of people have got it working there, so they will be able to help. Okay, so uh, now all we want to do is we want to we want to go to the Universal Engine Unreal Engine Unlocker DVD 1.93. So that's that'll be the folder that you down the downloaded and unzipped. So I will open it now. So you'll get this UUU. Um, client.exe and we're going to select a process by clicking select and deadbydaylight.exe so you want to put this on your actual deadbydaylight.exe beware do not run this uh, do not try to to attach the process onto the live build because you can get banned via the easy anti-cheat and plus I don't even think you can attach it 
um, because it the easy anti-cheat disguises it. But anyway, uh, just don't do it. <laughs> It'll get you banned. Um, anyway, so we've attached it. Now we want to click inject DLL and we have this thing. So first thing that I usually do is I set the new resolution to set and I press set and it's 3840 times 2160, which is my screen size. Um, but there's a few tricks that I, there's one trick that I want to show you is you can actually put this resolution a little bit higher. So like to 3200 or I think 3000 works uh, from the previous value. And there we go, we have hidden the the UI here. So this is a way to get cleaner um, screenshots and of the main menu kind of things. So what we want to do here is I want to press on uh, from here, you'll see that there is a key bindings and there's a key called enable disable camera. And so we want to press insert and now we can pretty much, yeah, we can we can control the camera and we can, yeah, we can get some clean screenshots of the main menu of survivors sitting. And this also works in the loadout. I'll show you what I mean. I'll just set this back to my normal. So this also works in the play as survivor. Um, so I, I use this in my previous video to get a little bit more of a clean kind of thing. So this way I'm just gonna go to maybe 7,000 ish. Hopefully my computer can handle it because sometimes your computer can't really handle it. Um, but yeah, so this is a little bit more clean, it gets rid of the right hand side. We haven't figured out how to get the, rid of the left hand side just yet. Um, but yeah, uh, you can then click on insert and yeah, you've got your screen and you can get a little bit more of a clean kind of thing. You can get rid of that bottom overlay by also increasing the height uh, to maybe, maybe 2,500. I'd see. And yeah, you can see that we've got a little bit more of a clean thing and it is running a little bit slower. So you'll notice that your machine will run, uh, will, will likely drop frames if you increase the resolution to this much. But that's how to hide the, uh, the user interface. Okay, cool. Now we've done that. We're gonna press insert to disable the camera again. Um, just remember insert toggles and disables the camera. Um, but you can change these buttons in the key bindings uh, tab by just pressing. Anyway, onto the important part, which is kill your friends. So as you can see here, we have a steam kind of thing, um, which is very good. Um, this means that we're playing online and what we can do is we can invite Dice Sword, which is myself. I have another copy of the dev build and another steam profile. Um, and I will be right back once I just um, accept the invite on my other profile. As we can see here, I have actually accepted the request uh, to the invite uh, from my other profile, uh, Dice Sword, and I, we are both killers, and that's actually fine. So because this brings us to our important commands list. Um, so I have a few console commands right here. There's a lot more but these are the most important commands that you will need. So we're gonna use this DBD for start match. So in order to uh, enable the console first, we wanna press the tilde key. Now, I know that some, uh, some keyboards, especially non-English keyboards, do not have the tilde key. That is completely fine. Uh, what you can do is you can just click on the, the uh, key bindings tab, and where is it, where is it? Uh, toggle the hood. Sorry, one second. Uh, it is somewhere here. Yes, here. So just go to the configuration tab in Universal Unreal Engine Unlocker and just make this tilde key into something else. Maybe a dollar sign, excl exclamation mark, any of these things. So you can change this key here. You can also change it um, uh, in the base input. So if you have not base input.ini file, I'll just show you where that is. Uh, so in the dev build, just go to dead by daylight um, config. No, no, sorry, 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 not here, not here. Engine, sorry, just go to engine config and the base input.ini file. 
That's to change it if you haven't attached um, the universal Unreal Engine Unlocker. Because the console still works without the Unreal Engine Unlocker, it's just that the Unreal Engine Unlocker allows for better camera motions. Anyway, I got a little bit off track. So we can change the, 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 the cosmetics here. As you'll see, everything's unlocked. I'll just change mine to Blighted Huntress. And then, yeah, so to our first most important command that you'll use very often. So this will be DVD for start match. And you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to go up and down the com different commands. Um, yeah, so I'll use this one. I'll press enter. And this will start the match um, no matter what kind of settings you have. So you can have more than four survivors, more than one killer. So this is a really amazing command. And it, I can think of like just really fun situations that you could have if you have so many people with the dev build um, playing all at once, I guess. You could have like three killers versus 10, maybe not 10 survivors, but I think there's a limit, uh, max limit on the players. But I think that can be disabled with console commands. But anyway, um, I'm getting off track. But anyway, yeah, as you can see here, we have two killers together. Um, I have myself and, um, and myself again <laughs> on the other computer. So now we get to some of our more interesting commands uh, and useful commands. So the thing is, the, on the loading screen, sometimes you can get stuck the first time you do it. And if you try, try out a map for the second time, um, it will work. So if you get stuck on the loading screen, just type this command in, into your console. I won't do it just because um, I'm already in and everything works because I've loaded into a good map. But some maps don't really work very well. For example, uh, Father Campbell's Church, uh, that map tends to fail quite often. Um, I don't think it actually works, to be honest. So in that, in that case, um, just press this command here and it will bring you back. Also, you can because you're in kill your friends mode, you can choose which map you want to load into. And yeah, and all your offerings, all your perks, because you can get like the third perk, you know, third level of it. Anyway, the next command that we want to explore is the hide all HUD command. So this is a v, v char. Uh, no, sorry. Sorry, I, I'm not actually sure what it is, but I think it's a V. No, it's, it's, it's a variable anyway. <laughs> That's what we need to do. So we're enabling, we're setting the variable to a value of one. Just remember, you can also press the question mark and it will uh, give you um, the help command for what it is. So in order to get into the second menu, uh, I just press the tilde key twice. Um, that just shows you all the previous commands. But anyway, so it just says for you, let me just go back to it, it hides all the HUDs components. So let's actually just make that to a value of one. So you can see what it does. As you can see, my entire HUD is very clean. This is what I use to create very clean cinematics. Okay, so the next uh, most important command that you'll probably use very often is the spawn exposure enabled. So you wanna use this if you're the player, if you're like a survivor and you don't want crows appearing because they are very annoying for cinematics sometimes and you don't really want them there. So what you'll do is you'll just type this into console, press the tilde key, again, just control V or just, you can just type it in. It also just shows you all the commands that, um, that you have access to. So you can just click the up and down arrows and just explore a lot of the commands just from here as well, just by typing in something random and then just seeing what commands are available. But anyway, you can just type in this one. You can say zero, zero just to stop the crows appearing. Um, this the exposure crows appearing. Uh, a very useful command as well is slow mo 0.1. And it sounds exactly as what it does. So it pretty much slows down the command, uh, the speed to uh, a tenth. Like if I said 0 0.1, because one is the standard speed. And as we can see, this is normal speed again. And this makes it very good for cinematics. You can even pause everything um, by just going slow-mo zero. And this will absolutely pause everything in game. 
Uh, and yeah, so I use this just just by going a little creatively because <laughs> I'm only one person recording, right? So because most of the time I don't want to bother other people. So if I want to get a cinematic of, for example, Fang on a generator, essentially I'll just put it down to 0 0.01 and then I'll get on the generator and then I will put it, put it, uh, I will use slow-mo zero and then she will be stuck on the generator. She won't be able to get off, you know, and then I'll be able to film a cinematic of her on the generator or on the totem. So yeah, slow-mo is very, very useful. Okay, some other commands that are very useful are, I should probably just talk about the universal, the toggle debug camera. Okay, so toggle debug camera is a very useful command. So essentially it will get you out of, um, of, of, of um, the normal view. And we will explain why Huntress is stuffed up in a second, but you can use it just to check like what a object is called. As you can see, it will say hit actor class, and that will tell you how to spawn that thing because it will tell you the name of that object. And if I wanted to spawn this, I can actually just go uh, DVD spawn, I think, what was it? Uh, I actually remember the command. <laughs> but anyway, you can spawn like various things like hooks, um, pallets, lockers, just by looking at them in the um, debug camera and seeing what their name is, and then you can just spawn them in. Uh, you can also look in the game files, um, as you can see the hit actor path, to see what the name is in-game. Okay, cool. So, but there is a, a certain problem with this, uh, with the debug camera, is it actually slows down, I think. Um, uh, if you press slow-mo, like if you put 0.1, it will also slow the rotation of the camera, I believe. Um, but essentially, you shouldn't use this for cinematics, is the thing I'm trying to go go with. Like, even though you can press backspace to, uh, hold, uh, to take away the display kind of thing, you shouldn't be using this. If you want to take a cinematic, here's what you want to do. So you know how you've put in uh, Unreal Engine 4 Unlocker? Yeah, so, so now you just want to press... Like, because you've already um, injected the DLL, you can press insert now, and you can use this to take cinematics. Um, from here, you can also just slow down the, the camera speed, the rotation speed in the options here. Like you can speed it up or slow it down. And you can just use controller to take some very, very cinematic shots because this the controller will give you the most control over um, how the shots look. Um, I'm not using controller right now, I'm just using a keyboard, so my control is not that great. Uh, you can also use the one and three numpad key keys to rotate the screen to get those weird um, tilt tilted shots, if you know what I mean. Okay, cool. And that's basically the lowdown on how to use the camera. Um, it's just a lot of experimentation, really. But just use a controller, um, if you want to do zoom in shots, you can actually just start at the character and then zoom out and while you're rotating and it, it creates this really cool effect because you can just reverse that in post-processing and you can like look like you've done like a crazy zoom into the character and it just fits perfectly on your character. Um, yeah. So, um, some other things that you can do. So you can press, oh yes, sorry, I forgot to explain why the, the character looks screwed up. So if you look at your own character uh, in game, you'll see that they are very screwed up if you're a killer. The reason why is because your camera is basically over, over here-ish, or maybe a little bit higher. So, and, um, so the, they move the top, so the way that behavior program their game is, uh, if you are a killer, the way you see yourself is it just pushes the top half of you away from you, I guess. So this is part of the reason why you need multiple people because uh, to other players, you will seem completely normal, but to yourself, you will seem, your character will look very messed up, which is why you generally want to play a survivor um, and not a killer. Otherwise you'll see yourself 
very weird, weirdly. Okay, sure. So, yeah, so the reason for that is basically, yeah, it, it's just programmed naturally to look like that uh, for yourself, but it displays the correct model uh, for other people. Now, the other things you want to, you can use are fly. Uh, so fly does exactly what you think it does. Um, it allows you to fly, but it does not allow you to clip through objects, as we can see here. If you want to disable fly, you can't actually just click, click on uh, put in fly again. What you need to do is put in ghost, so that disables it. Uh, I don't know why that's the case, but it just kind of is. Um, you can also, um, if you're using controller, you can't go upwards, um, especially on a survivor either. So you have to use Q and Z to go up and down inside uh, the ghost mode. So ghost, uh, as you can predict, it's the same as fly, but you can go inside uh, objects and clip through uh, things that you wouldn't normally be able to. Okay, so I'm just gonna toggle it off by just putting in the ghost command again. And yeah, as we can see, we went back to the ground. So that's cool if you wanna go on top of a house or on top of something at the very top of the temple of purgation, you know, whatever you wanna do really. Okay, so not some other commands, dbd add hp, so this does what you think it does. On a survivor, if you're injured, add hp or remove hp is what you think it does. Um, it just puts you back a health state, I guess. So toggle debug camera, I've talked about that. So set bind. So this is a very useful command that essentially it sets a specific key towards a command. Personally, I find not that much use for it. Like, but if you if you are using it, um, these commands very often, you could set bind uh, V to ghost. So every time you press V, instead you're actually just putting in the console command ghost but I don't really find a use for it because I can just press the console and press the up and down arrows to see my previous commands. And that will usually get me to the command I need. Uh, but if you want, you can set like a specific thing like adding HP or doing something else to a key, um, to a keyboard press. Okay, some other things like DVD option set resolution 125. So if you look in the menu right here in my settings, you'll see I'm actually at 100 uh, resolution, but I can actually change this because by default, Dead by Daylight only renders at a maximum of 1920 times 1080p. So it's just 1080p. So if you put this into console, uh, so it's a little weird the, the way it works because 125 isn't exactly 125 here. So if I put in uh, 125, uh, what will it do? Can I have a look? It did not do anything. <laughs> uh, wait, one second, sorry. I'm just gonna check settings. Yeah, so it goes to 172. You can see it's it's kind of not really relational. So um, yeah, so this one actually sets the resolution higher of textures and everything, but it makes your computer lag. So I would advise setting it to the highest number you can get, but not too high. So maybe for my computer, I would say like one, 110 or something. Uh, let me just check the percentage. Settings and 129, and as you can see, it's bigger than 100%, which is kind of weird. Um, so if you set like resolution in the Universal Unreal Unlocker, it doesn't actually set it above the 1920 times 1080p kind of thing. Okay, yeah. Um, another thing to say, sorry, about this Unreal Engine Unlocker is you can also adjust the the movement here, and I set my movement to be really slow, so then I can get some really cinematic shots. Okay, now a few other things. You can do DBD reset palettes. So I don't think it resets broken palettes, but it makes the palettes go back up. Um, you can also do something called uh, DBD list items. So this will list all the items uh, that you have. Wait, sorry, and if, you, if you have a look here, um, if I just close the item here. So these are the items that you can spawn for both the killers, which are named as slashes in the files, and campers, which are known as survivors in the files. And you can kind of just do something really silly like this. Um, I'll put in a chainsaw, chainsaw. Uh, but this is how you know their names. Like you, you'll spawn item, and then you'll look at item slasher uh, chainsaw. So 
this should spawn a chainsaw somewhere. Um, wait, let me just look at my HUD actually. Uh, DVD, let me unhide my HUD. Sorry, one second. So to unhide your HUD, just basically, let me just delete this command. So I'm just gonna scroll through my previous ones and I'm gonna put this to one again. Um, whoops, what? Oh, zero, sorry. And yeah, it, it doesn't work on the, the Huntress because it's a little bit glitched, but on some killers you can basically use your chainsaw, <laughs> use a chainsaw or use some other, you can use the Huntress's hatches, hatches, hatchets on the nurse or something. But on some killers it doesn't really work. Uh, the final thing that we'll just go over is you can also just like spawn survivors like this. Let me just check that this is the right spawn camper. Yeah, spawn camper by name. And you can, uh, you'll have to put in their uh, in-game names, I think, but you can put in like three ashes or something. For example, if I want to spawn three ashes, but keep in mind, these won't actually be like real life survivors. Like they won't move. You can't make them move or anything, um, but you can just spawn survivors if you want to. And um, yeah. Okay, some other things. So I'm just going to down him. Uh, you can do is you can put in like infinite flashlight energy and you can allow killing. So I'll just put this one in just for show you how it works. So this is pretty much having a memento Mori. Wait, what? Come on. Allow killing, sorry. Allow killing. Not quite working. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but you can, you can like basically mess around. Um, there's If you look in the Discord channel, like, uh, in the useful commands, you'll find a lot more information and you can even go to the console usage for more information on how all these commands work. But you can really mess around and do pretty much whatever you want with the dev build. And I haven't even gotten into uh, changing textures or anything. So if you want to change textures or model models, please check out the Discord. Um, Shinsley has created uh, tutorials for how to do everything um, uh, based on uh, Schmoll's work. So uh, thank you to Shinsley and Schmoll, uh, uh, full credit to them for this tutorial as well. Okay, so that's that's basically the lowdown on how to get everything working. So the problem is you, you'll need a lot of friends for this, if you see what I mean. Because um, if you want to make active shots of the nurse moving, you'll have to have one person on camera, one person actually doing the moving because you can't actually move while you are pressing insert and in the Unreal Engine Unlocker. But uh, that's basically it from me. Um, sorry for the lengthy tutorial, but I wanted to get in detail as possible. Um, get it, Yeah, so that people understand how to make cinematics in DVD and how to get custom camera angles. So thank you for being here. You are my lifeblood, Animanian out.